call the Honourable Leanne Delzell. Mr Speaker, I am very disappointed in this Taxation Budget Measures Bill because it is not ambitious for New Zealand. There is nothing in this budget that is ambitious for New Zealand. The only step change that I could see in this budget and in this bill is a step back, not a step up. And I would have thought that, in fact, a step up was what the government was talking about when they talked about a step change. But no, we find it's a step back. But I found in the regulatory impact statement that they were looking to achieve a step up in economic growth by improving incentives to work, save and invest. Well, that isn't a very clear message to the people I've been talking to about the implications of this budget as we've led up today. And this bill is not about a brighter future for the vast majority of New Zealanders who contribute, and I really would like the Prime Minister to hear this, who contribute to the economic, social, cultural and environmental aspects of what defines us as a nation, because the Prime Minister dismissed the entire significance of their contribution to our nation when he told them not to be envious of the huge increases or decreases in tax that the um, wealthy were going to face. Those that earned the most would get major increases um, in terms of their income, even beyond the weekly earning capacity of some of the people who've got the least amount. But let's not be envious of these. And the reason he told them not to be envious was because we had to do something to assist those people because we needed to keep them in New Zealand. Well, the front page of the Dominion this morning had a very interesting article about who these valuable people were. Lawyers and accountants. This is the first time I have ever heard anyone describe lawyers and accountants as major contributors to the productive economy. And I'm, I'm a, and it's Trevor Mallard and Leanne Delzell. We are these major contributors to New Zealand's economic capacity. How extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. I just, I just, oh, are you jealous of me? I think you should be jealous, you should be envious of me because I am a lawyer and I'm one of the people that the Prime Minister thinks is so valuable that he wants to encourage me to stay in New Zealand. Well, I'm determined to stay in New Zealand and I'm determined to make sure that we reclaim the Treasury benches in this country at the next general election. OK, scientists. Now, I buy that. I agree with him. Scientists are a valuable contributing factor to our productive economy. The real economy needs more scientists working in that. No, they don't turn over 70,000 up, but I'm going to come to the wage rates in a minute because we actually get to the nub of the problem, and it, scientists are included in this, but we really get to the nub of the problem when we get to the nurses. Now, I thought that the nurses... The nurses actually don't earn that much to put them into the extremely wealthy category. And, 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 the, and the funny thing is, and what's absolutely extraordinary, what's absolutely extraordinary is that, um, and I'm, I'm listening to all of the national MPs, because I, I want this on Hansard. I want um, the Deputy Chair of the Commerce Committee, Aaron Gilmore, the Dunedin List MP, Nikki Wagner, you know, I'm, I, I want them all on the record, Simon Bridges, all said, yes, they are in the extremely wealthy category when we were talking about nurses. Now, what they said, that's what I said, I said that National put them into the extremely wealthy category, and yes, they are, is what we heard, a barrage of inge interjections from the National Party. Now, I actually want to make the point and put on record that nurses earn as much as they do because of the pay job we gave them because of the problems created by the National Party and they oppose the pay job and in fact they have criticised our government for spending what we did in the public health system because we gave the pay job to nurses. Anyway, let's have a look at what they say. 
Um, that, that pay jolt only works in the public health sector. How many nurses do you think are paid over seventy thousand dollars a year in rest homes? How many do you think? I think not many. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to um, the, the nurses' organisation on the front page of the Dominion this morning. Says nurses with five years' experience earn, on average, average sixty thousand dollars per annum. So they don't even reach that category. And why have these professionals been singled out? It's to stop them leaving the country. To stop them leaving the country. But Statistics New Zealand tells us that workers across all sectors leave the country. Housekeepers, restaurant workers, drivers and labourers are also among the top 10% of occupations alongside nurses, teachers and finance and sales professionals and I have to tell this House that it's not about tax for the housekeepers. I'm sure that Bill English has worked out exactly how much more he's going to get in his pay packet each week, but I bet he hasn't worked out how much his housekeeper's going to get because she isn't going to be getting very much at all. Mr Speaker, it's actually not just about low-paid wage earners as well, and I know that we've talked about that tonight. I've been talking to taxi drivers and other self-employed and small business owners, and they are gutted by the increase in GST. It's going to put their precarious businesses under a real threat of failure. And I know that the National Party doesn't give a toss about small to medium-sized enterprises, and certainly not about the self-employed. But when they have to put 15 per cent on their GST accounts, they know that their precarious businesses are really under threat of failure. Now, I've had conversations leading up to this budget day with many taxi drivers, so we get to use taxi drivers a lot these days, and they were very worried leading up to it, but I had my first conversation with a taxi driver post-budget announcement in the dinner break um, before I came back. He said to me that when he had heard John Key say people shouldn't be envious because they were going to get much bigger tax and, um, you know, cuts than he was, um, he was reminded of the expression, let the meat cake. That's, that, that's, that's what he was reminded. He was a very, very intelligent and capable taxi driver. Now, tonight, he says, if there was a Bastille, he would storm it. That's what he said to me tonight. Absolutely extraordinary. And I said to him, I said, I'm going to quote you in the House tonight. And he said, he said, that's great. He said he would down st tools and storm the Bastille. He would switch the key off and he would storm the Bastille if we had a Bastille to storm. Because he gets something that John Key simply doesn't get. It's not tax that is holding back incomes in this country. It's wages and it's the income earning potential of our SME sector. That's what's holding New Zealand back. And this budget has nothing to do to increase wages. It has nothing to do with the productive capacity and the earning ability of our SME sector. My taxi driver tonight knew the figures. He knew that Paul Reynolds was getting over $6,000 a week more in his pay packet every week. He knew that for some of the chief executives, he knew for the prime minister and cabinet ministers, he knew that they were going to be getting hundreds of dollars a week more in their pay packet every week. He knew that. But he, he didn't know what the minimum wage earner was going to get. He didn't know that. Order, of course, the order. minimum wage earner is going to get... Point of order. The Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Uh, Mr, Mr, Mr Speaker, I know this is robust. This is a tax debate. But just inane, endless barracking as a speaker is trying to speak, even though she, she tried to take advantage of the microphone to combat that, so I think is beyond the pale. Robustness, fair enough. Inane barrackings for the street. I thank the member, but I did, uh, I did call for order in the House, and I just want to say to people, this, this can, place can get a bit excitable on occasions, but members have a right to free speech, and free speech is to be able to be heard. Of course, we invite interjections, and I'm sure the Honourable Leanne Dell responds to them and likes the cut and thrust of the debate, but it should not drown her out. I invite the Honourable Leanne Dell Zell to continue. She has 58 seconds left. 58 seconds. Mr Speaker, what my taxi driver didn't know was how much you would get if you were on the minimum wage. 
and the figure that he didn't know was that somebody on the minimum wage would get four 